in this video. I'm going to give you some ideas on things you can do to get more views on your YouTube videos. I think I'm qualified to speak on this issue because I've had some good success on YouTube over the years. My videos have combined to get over 350 million views on YouTube. And I think part of that success is because of some of the things that I'm going to be telling you about today. So pull up a chair. This isn't going to be quick, but I hope it'll be helpful. Well, let's pretend that a friend of mine emailed me and said, Jim, I made this really great YouTube video of my kids riding their horses into town where they went through the McDonald's drive through on horseback. I think it's a great video and I want to make sure it gets as many views as possible. Are there any tricks I can use to ensure that? I would invite my friend over to sit with me here in my office. And the first thing I would do is get out a notepad and a pen and draw a line down the middle from top to bottom so that I've got two columns. Over in the left column, I would write down words or short phrases that describe what the video is about. Horses, kids, horseback riding, McDonald's, drive through paint horse. And the kids were all girls, so I'll write that down. Let's also write down pony, even though the video isn't really about ponies, but a lot of people equate ponies with horses. And how about the name of the town where this happened? Let's say Springfield. Now for each of those words, I'm going to write down any variations of those words that I can think of. So horse, singular, in addition to horses. Horseback ride, in addition to horseback riding. And riding horses, in addition to horseback riding, too. Also, for some of those phrases like horseback riding or horseback ride, I'm going to put the individual words on the list, too. Horseback, ride, riding. McDonald's without an apostrophe, because that's how some people might accidentally try to spell it, even though the restaurant chain always uses an apostrophe. And be sure to write down both plurals and singulars. Ponies, plural, in addition to pony. Paint horses, plural, in addition to paint horse. How about animal, instead of horse? And animals, plural. And equestrian. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. Now I'm going to take some of the best ones on that list and add the word video or videos to it. Horse video. Horse videos, horseback riding video, horseback riding videos, paint horse video, paint horse videos. Okay, well, what we've just completed there is a list of keywords. Keywords are basically the things that someone might type into a search bar if they were searching for a video like this. Now, we need to prioritize that list. Over in the column on the right side of the paper, we're going to take all those keywords from the left side of the paper and rank them in terms of quality. The top of the list will be the best keywords we came up with, the ones that best describe the video. All the way down to the worst keywords, the ones that will still describe something in the video, but that on their own don't fully describe the video. This is a bit of a judgment call, but I think that up at the top of the list, I'm going to go with horse, horses, riding horses, horseback riding, horse video, horse videos, kids, girls, horseback ride, McDonald's, McDonald's without the apostrophe, equestrian, and on and on. Okay, I'm sure you're wondering, what's the point of all this? Well, hang on just a minute, and you'll see. When you upload a video to YouTube, as it's uploading, the very next thing they ask you to do is come up with a title for the video. And I can't stress enough the importance of carefully choosing a title for your video. Let me explain why. When someone goes to YouTube's main page, the biggest thing you see on the screen is several videos that YouTube has picked out for you, which they think you might enjoy. I've got eight suggested videos here. How do I decide if any of these are really of interest to me? 
there's really just two key pieces of information here to help me decide. There's this thumbnail photo, which gives you a little visual representation of what the video is about. And then there's the title of the video. Of course, the name of the channel is also listed, as well as how many views the video has gotten and how long ago it was uploaded to YouTube. But those things generally aren't things that people take into account when deciding if a video is worth clicking on. It's usually all about the thumbnail photo and the title of the video. So it's absolutely vital to choose those carefully. Let's start with the title. And here's where I want to teach you an important trick. And it's one of the reasons we took the time to write out that list of all those keywords. Over on the right side of the paper, we've ranked the keywords in order of importance. And my trick or my suggestion to you is that the title for your video should incorporate one or more of those keywords at the top of the list. So, Let's see if we can come up with a good title for my friend's video that uses one or more of the top four or five keywords on this list. And those first two on the list, horse and horses, there's probably not a really smooth way to use both of them in the title, but we absolutely must use at least one of those in the title. How about this? My kids riding horses through the McDonald's drive through it uses our keywords of horses, riding horses, kids, and McDonald's. So that's pretty good. And using that would be a good choice, but let me make one other suggestion. Even though on the homepage, only about 75 letters will be displayed of the title, you can actually use up to 100 letters in your title. So to make your title even more search friendly, think about throwing in another keyword or two towards the end of your title, even though the end of a long title won't be displayed in a list of suggested videos. The title I came up with a moment ago my kids riding horses through the McDonald's drive through is only 57 letters long. So I've got room for 43 more if I can figure out a smooth sounding way to do it. So how about this? My kids riding horses through the McDonald's drive through dash a funny horse video with my girls. That's 93 letters. Not only does that get the word funny on the screen, which might encourage someone to choose this video, but it also gets the phrase horse video in there. Plus now we've got both horses, plural, and horse, singular, in the title, making this title even a little stronger from the perspective of search friendliness. Let me tell you what you don't want to do for a video's title. You don't want a title that doesn't incorporate any of your keywords. And you don't want a title that doesn't give people any clue of what the video is about. So for example, a really horrible title for my friend's video would be Joe's Vlog Season 1 Episode 12. That's horrible. It doesn't give you any clue of what the video is about. YouTube is not going to recommend that to people that it knows love horse videos. And it does nothing to make this video show up in the search results if someone is searching for a video about horses or riding horses. Also, I think it goes without saying that the title of a video should not just be a bunch of keywords strung together, <laughs> like horse, horses, riding horses, horseback riding, horse video, horse videos. That's an even worse title than Joe's Vlog Season 1, Episode 12. Now, you also don't want to do clickbait with your titles. That's just going to piss people off. So here's some more examples of titles that would be very bad choices because these are just clickbait titles. The greatest horse video ever. You won't believe what these horses did at McDonald's. And these girls did something horrible with their horses. Don't do that. Clickbait is not going to work for you long term. So there you have some ideas to think about when choosing a title for a video. Now let's talk about coming up with a good description for a video. Again, we're going to take a look at that list of keywords that we came up with, ranked in order of how strong they were. 
And we're going to want to sprinkle some of those words and phrases into the description of the video. And be sure that some of those keywords at the top of your list appear in the first sentence, or at least the first paragraph of whatever description you come up with. Video descriptions can pretty much be as long as you want them to be. The word limit is very generous, but my guess is that YouTube's algorithm doesn't pay much attention to what's in paragraph 10 of a video's description. So sprinkle those keywords and phrases into the first paragraph or maybe the first two whenever possible. Write a complete description of what your video is about. You don't get any extra points for being brief. And don't put any hype in it because people can only see the video's description after they've already chosen to watch your video. So you don't need to put stuff in the description that is designed to hook someone. They've already been hooked. And I hope it goes without saying that just putting a list of a bunch of keywords into your video's description is not what you want to do. Write legitimate sentences and paragraphs using your keywords. Don't just paste in a list of keywords. After you've given your video a title and a description, the next thing is picking a thumbnail. And this is also extremely critical because the video's title and thumbnail are the two biggest things that people scrutinize when deciding whether to click on a video that YouTube has recommended to them. YouTube automatically comes up with three different screenshots from various points in your video that you can use as your thumbnail. And you also have the option to upload a thumbnail of your own. Let me just point out that the most successful YouTubers, guys like Mr. Beast or Casey Neistat or Dude Perfect, they're not just using screenshots for their thumbnails. They'll take the time to come up with something much more compelling. Something I like to do after I've finished shooting my video is to stage a photo for the thumbnail. In other words, recreating a scene from the video, but perfectly setting everything in place, getting the camera angle just right, shooting it with the best camera I've got to make a really good thumbnail. There are a lot of videos on YouTube from a lot of experts with ideas on how to make good YouTube thumbnails. Go look for those if you're interested in improving your thumbnail technique. Just know that if you simply use one of those screenshots that YouTube suggests for a thumbnail, you're probably not trying hard enough. If you want a hit video, you're going to have to try a little harder than just accepting one of YouTube's automatic screenshots to come up with a great thumbnail. After you've written a title and a description for your video, and after you've come up with a good thumbnail, look down at the bottom of the screen and you'll notice it says, show more. <laughs> Click there and it'll give you the opportunity to add tags. Tags are just keywords. So if you look at that column on the right side of our pad of paper, that's what we're gonna type in for tags for my friend's video. You just put a comma between each of them as you type them in. So horse, comma, horses, comma, riding horses, comma, horseback riding, comma, and so on and so on down the list. By the way, see where it says tags play a minimal role in helping viewers find your video? Well, even if that's true, and I'm not sure it is, what's the harm in listing all my keywords and phrases in the tag section? My advice to you is to take the time to do it. Some of you watching this video are probably rolling your eyes a little bit and thinking, really, Jim, these are your best tips? Come up with good titles and thumbnails? Really? You don't think I've figured that out already? <laughs> well, okay, here's one I bet you've never given much thought to. Closed captions. Now, let me put it to you this way. When you upload a video to YouTube, it has no idea what your video is about. There are no humans at YouTube headquarters watching every video that's uploaded to YouTube, categorizing it, making notes about what the video is about. You're just uploading a video to a computer server. 
Think about all the home movies I've shot over the last 20 years of my kids and my wife and my dogs. What if I wanted to find a specific video on my computer's hard drive? Like say the video of my daughter when she was 10 years old learning to ride a bike. I can't just go into Windows File Explorer and do a search for daughter learning to ride a bike. My computer has no idea what the various video clips on my hard drive are about and which ones might be about any particular thing. YouTube's computers have the same problem, and that's why they ask you when you upload a video to give it a title, a description, and add tags. They're trying to get you to tell them what your video is about. Once they know what your video is about, they can recommend it to people that seem to be interested in those types of videos. Now, have you ever noticed that after you upload your videos to YouTube, they automatically add closed captions to them? You have to click on the little CC button at the bottom of the player in order to see them. YouTube uses speech-to-text technology to listen to the audio track of your video and automatically transcribe it. There's a lot of room for improvement in the technology. It flat out gets some of the words wrong. It's not very good about capitalizing or adding punctuation, and it has a nasty way of breaking sentences into pieces or putting the end of one sentence with the beginning of the next sentence. But my point is that by using speech-to-text technology, YouTube's servers do have the capability of figuring out what you're saying in your videos. They just have to look at the closed captions. So if you say the word horses in your video a few times, it's probably gonna figure out that your video is about horses. Plus, hopefully you've put the word horses in the video's title and description and tags. So what I'm getting at here is that if your video is about horses, say horses a few times during the video so that it'll get picked up in the closed captions because I think YouTube uses the closed captions in addition to the title, description, and tags to figure out what your video is about and who to recommend it to. In fact, don't just say horses, say quite a few of your key words and phrases. If anything I've said in this video so far has been useful to you, Patreon is basically my tip jar. If you want to thank me for taking the time to make this video, sharing what I know about getting more views on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com slash jimzim and take a look at the options for becoming one of my patrons. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help me cover some of the costs I've had in making these videos, like the expensive camera and audio gear. Now, all the things I've talked about so far, coming up with good titles, descriptions, thumbnails, and tags for your videos, those are all things that you can go back and change on your videos after you've already uploaded them to your channel. So if you've heard any good ideas here today, don't just use those ideas on your future videos, go back and edit the existing titles, descriptions, thumbnails, and tags for some of your videos. But don't bother doing it for every one of your existing videos, but give some thought to what were the best videos you've made so far. Not necessarily the ones that have gotten the most views, but the ones that you did a really good job on, yet not very many people ever watched them. Go back and take a look at the titles, descriptions, thumbnails, and tags for those videos and see if maybe you could edit those details to make them a little stronger based on some of the things I've told you about today. Finally, I do want to plant a couple of seeds in your mind for your future videos, a couple of things to think about before you shoot your next video. Things that'll make your videos just a little more professional looking, a little more polished. If you're shooting your YouTube videos with a cell phone, get yourself a gimbal like the DJI OM5 or OM6. They're not really expensive. And what a gimbal does is stabilize your camera so that when you're shooting video, no matter how shaky your hands are or how much the car you're riding in is shaking or the horse you're riding on, 
the camera stays nice and steady. That'll make your videos look so much better. And if you're shooting your videos with something better than a cell phone, for example, a lot of my videos are shot with this Canon camera, be sure to put the camera on a tripod. Tripods aren't expensive either, and they too will make so much difference in giving your videos a smooth, polished, professional look. I guarantee you that the most successful YouTubers are using tripods and gimbals to make their videos look smooth and professional. And they also pay a lot of attention to audio quality. If the audio track on your videos is hard to understand, that's a huge turnoff for your viewers. If you're talking to the camera like I am now, but you're using the built-in mic on your phone to pick up the audio, that's not usually gonna turn out very well. I use the same kind of audio equipment that you find in a lot of radio stations. That is way more than you're probably gonna need to do if you're just getting started on YouTube, but you should look at getting some kind of better mic than just the mic that's built in to your cell phone. And instead of always just talking directly to the camera, consider doing it as a voiceover some of the time. You'll get a lot better sounding audio by recording a voiceover, reading from a script that you've taken the time to write and edit until the words are just right, than you will from standing in front of the camera and just winging it off the top of your head. Well, I hope something that I've said at some point today has been useful to you. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas that you can use to improve your videos and to coax YouTube's algorithm into suggesting your videos to more people. That will lead to more views, and that will lead to more revenue. I'm pretty sure these techniques have worked for me, helping me to get over 350 million views on YouTube. I'm Jim Zim. Thank you for watching.